I now know what I must do. I no longer need the unsolicited outside advice of people who have no authority here. I am here by the Spirit of God as a prophet of God sounding a trumpet in these last days. The worst that could happen if, 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 if everything was true, all I got to do is repent sincerely from my heart. There's enough power in the blood to cover all kinds of sins. There's not a human being in the world that hasn't sinned. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There have been times I've had to repent and utter absolute uh, brokenness before God with tears streaming down my cheeks saying, Lord, I have not lived up to what you have expected me to live up to. And, um, but no, I have not had affairs. Over the last several weeks, I have done everything in my power to negotiate with the advocate group to convince them to tell me what they know. I told Jerry Falwell that there was a sexual encounter. And I know he did because I was standing right next to him when he was with Jerry. And uh, there was a situation that was 15 or 20 minutes long. And uh, we repented. I repented before God. Most folks just never saw anybody as anointed as I am, as bold as I am, as wild as I am on television. And I don't pull any punches and I certainly ain't lukewarm. I, I was, I thought it was incredibly dishonest. But no, I have not had affairs. In my role as a general officer in the U.S. military, I've negotiated with our nation's enemies, with foreign officials at the highest levels of adversarial governments, and even with my own government up to the cabinet level. I watched all three of them today, okay? Anybody can watch them. What do you mean you gave them to? <laughs> what are you doing? He, do, he took out a saw and he, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he sawed off that first video and boom, and he put it on the table and, and then he put the second one on there and then the third one, oh, that third one, oh, the shoulder. And then he took those three videos and he, and he loaded them up in the truck and then, in, and, then, and, he, and then he drove them over to the investigator and he gave them to the investigator. I Hey everybody, it's Everett with the Wow for Freedom. It's the 25th of January, and this is a program that I do not want to do. And to make it even worse, I know I'm not going to get it all done in one program. Uh, IHOP, pastors, and prisons. There is a lot of ground to cover. Whew, so let's get started. I feel the sweet sound of freedom, and I won't be long. I want to dive right in and get through this as quick as possible. This is not a pleasant subject, but it's a subject that I'm not going to be able to talk about anything else unless I get this out of the way. I will say very, very quickly, and again, I do want to dive right in. I got kicked off of Twitter today. Um, Hillary Clinton said something completely ridiculous, and I simply responded with, Hillary, shut up. Uh, go pound your hammers with a phone and boom just that fast i was kicked off of twitter i'll probably get put back on but i only mention that to say please like please share please share please like please leave a comment rumble youtube even facebook uh please help us out we're heavily censored and we want to be around for the duration of 2024 so listen i am not an ihop pile on there's a big scandal going on at IHOP. It's been going on for months. The things that caused the scandal go back, you know, a couple of decades. I'm not an IHOP person. I have nothing against the IHOP people, but I was never in that camp. Nonetheless, I'm qualified to speak on this subject. I'm going to explain that very, very, very quickly. Uh, but there, there are some really good uh, podcasts that have been covering sort of the blow by blow. And it's very, very, very important because people have been hurt. And see, I'd like to be talking about other things. I'd like to be talking about the win in New Hampshire. I'd like to be, anyway, I'll get off of that. But people get hurt. And the, the, the podcasts that are talking about this, uh, Wake Up and Win, the young fellow there, Blaze, is doing an amazing job. Wanda Alger has been talking about this a lot. And it is therapeutic and it's healing because you got to get over it. And you can't, uh, as 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 believers, and I'm talking to believers, <coughs> pardon me, 
we can't go around all beat up and and uh, not not available for what God wants to do. And so that's why I'm uh, going to be doing, it's going to be at least two programs. But uh, I will say hi to Jenny from Lewisburg, Ohio. And um, so I'm going to dive right in. And really tonight, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to explain, first of all, I'm going to explain why I am qualified to talk on this subject, because I've been through this subject, okay? I went through it early, early, early on in a couple of different phases. And then I'm going to, as, and I've gone through so much stuff, and it's funny, you know, I research topics. I always have ever started, since I started doing the program. And you kind of feel sort of a release when you get to those aha moments of, okay, this is what's really going on. And you get all the documentation uh, and you've got the receipts. Well, on this subject matter, I've got way, 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 way more receipts than I'd like to have. <laughs> the only problem is once you get the receipts, you don't feel no better <laughs> because it's yucky. It's nasty. It's ugly. It's painful. But I'm going to show you why I'm qualified to talk about this. And then uh, we're going to go through uh, the what I believe is the latest uh, PR release from IHOP. And it's just so disappointing, so enormously disappointing. Uh, and we're just going to go through that. And then I'm going to go through this sheet. And it's got about 16 items truisms for those that might have been in a <laughs> pardon me in an abusive uh, church situation but I'm just going to begin but I and I, I'm going to try to handle and Lord help me help me say what I need to say and not say what I don't need to say and Holy Spirit I trust you to to and I ask you to empower me to do that in Jesus name all right what you're going to see on the screen right here this is the scripture that saved my spiritual life very 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 early on I was in a church that was ultra, ultra, ultra prophetic. Um, the pastor, let's just get it out of the way. My first pastor went to prison for 17 years. That's not easy to do. And he went to prison for things that took place in the role of a pastor. And that's a lovely thing to have on your resume. And it wasn't exactly like that when I first got involved in the church. And there was this element of pride that crept in. And this element of uh, on the part of the pastor that uh, just it was uh, spiritually superior to anybody else. Now, the church never grew over about 60 people. It'd get up to 80 and then promptly, you know, get back down to 60. Uh, but after a few years, we had to get out. And uh, like seven years after that, I was subpoenaed. And I had to testify in a court case from my original pastor. And after that, my first pastor was sent to prison for 17 years. But I want to go back to the scripture here because this is the scripture that really rescued me when I was around all this pride. And uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, Paul was saying in the 12th chapter, to keep me from becoming conceited, other versions will say something like being uh, exalted above measure. So in other words, to, to keep him from becoming conceited, exalted above measure, puffed up, arrogant, full of pride, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Now, people can have different opinions about what that thorn in the flesh was. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, because it's not really, I don't really have to. Three times I pleaded with the Lord, take it away. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is perfected in weakness. So Paul was in, because of the abundance of the revelations, he was caught up into third heaven and he was seeing, God showed him things that nobody else had seen. And he was, uh, again, caught up into heaven. And there was the danger that he would become exalted and begin to believe his own advertising and become in his own mind, the most anointed man on the planet. So to keep him from becoming conceited, he was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan. But what was the answer? When he would pray and ask the Lord to take it away, the Lord, the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is perfected in weakness. And then I the, the Holy Spirit helped me to line up with James 4 and 6 
that simply says God gives grace. That's why he said God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And so the, the way out and the rescue for me, because see, I was young and dumb and I was, listen, y'all, I was 20 years in full-time ministry. I'm not in the ministry right now. Okay. Uh, and when I got out of the ministry, if I had it all to do over again, boy, would I do it over again? And maybe, maybe someday I'll be led to talk about that. But early on, I was young, green, and very dumb. But what I lacked up May, <laughs> what I lack because of dumbness, I made up for with zeal. So I was like out of control and like I was a sitting duck to be sucked up into that. And I, I probably walked in that for a little bit, but I, the, the scriptures that I uh, read to you, it's what rescued me per, uh, personally, because what Paul found out was that rather than become conceited and arrogant and full of pride, the only way out was grace. See, God gives grace to the humble. He opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And when the Lord said to Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, the danger was getting caught up in something that, that would be a result of spiritual pride. So what was the antidote? Grace. And guess what? You can't take advantage of grace without humility. And so humility and grace go together, and they are an antidote against spiritual pride. And I could spend a whole lot more talking about that. So I'm going to go back over here, get back to my slide. And I'm just going to show you this real quick. What you're looking at are the charging documents from my first pastor. See, this is the stuff you want on your resume. And there were 17 counts, two counts of rape. Rape. And this happened after I was gone. I, for some reason, I'm glad about that. I, and this is the other thing that's true. And it, this is why, as I'm listening to these testimonies of these people that were involved in IHOP, over and over, they say, I would have never believed that Mike Bickle could have been caught up in something like that. And I can say truthfully and frankly, just the way that it is, I would, I knew that I had to get out and it was time for me to get out, but I would have never, ever believed. Oh, he was arrogant. I don't want to get into all of that, but I would never have believed that uh, the things that he was charged for would be the things that he was charged for. And when we, when we look, I'll just go to the things that he's found guilty of. He was not found guilty of rape on the first rape charge, but he was found guilty of rape on the second uh, rape charge. And he was found guilty of rape, sexual battery, sexual battery, sexual battery, sexual battery, sexual battery, sexual. There were 17 counts and only one was my first pastor not uh, convicted for. And the last one was aggravated theft. And so there's the charging documents. And like, so I said again, that was, look, I'm much younger than Mike Bickle. <laughs> Take a little pride in that. But that was early on in my Christian experience. And once again, who wants to have that on their resume? And I have to, and so let me just say a couple of things. Uh, that was back, if anybody remembers Larry Lee and his teaching on the Lord's Prayer, it had an amazing impact on my life. And then later, Larry Lee went bad, or at least got into some trouble. I didn't follow that one too closely. But um, uh, but what I think as I was going through that teaching by Larry Lee is when I really knew the it, it, he really taught on the, the importance of the need for forgiveness. And my first pastor for months, I would pray every day and forgive. I would forgive him, his wife, the whole situation, the church. And I would pray every day. I would release. I would forgive. I would. And this went on for months. And then one day that gentle voice said, OK, you have forgiven. Let it go. But see, if I hadn't done that, I'd have still carried it. And to be honest, even after that, folks, you carry this stuff. And so that's why I'm talking about it. And no, I, to be honest with you, I've only heard of IHOP maybe a couple of times before the last few months, maybe a couple of times ever. Today is the first time I've heard a few minutes of Mike Bickle 
preaching. I made myself listen to about 10 minutes. I, I have a comment on that, but I won't do that. So no, I'm not an IHOP expert, but here's the thing. We've seen this movie before, y'all. If any of y'all are out there and you're hurt by this and, and you're kind of going by the play-by-play -play and the moment-by-moment, -moment, and I think they should this, and why aren't they? Hey, I completely understand. I completely get it because we've been there before. I've been there before. I went through that as an early Christian. And then I'm just going to tell this story. I was a young preacher boy, and I had a Jimmy Swaggart dream, and I'm going to talk about that dream. And it was it had to have been early, like January-ish of 1987, and I had a dream. And no, I don't have a dream ministry. <laughs> you know, this was very, very, very unique. But in my dream, I was in the backseat of a limousine. And uh, I was probably in preacher boy clothes. And I'm in the driver's side of the backseat of a limousine looking that way through the window. And through the window and like up on some steps. So some kind of a building with lots of steps. Jimmy Swaggart was talking to a group of guys in suits. And I can, t I could, ju you just have the sense those are like important people having an important conversation. And then Jimmy Swaggart came and he got in the car. I'm in the driver's side of the back seat. He's in the passenger side of the front seat. And he was smoking a cigarette. And I'm just a young, innocent preacher boy. And I'm like, Brother Swaggart you're smoking. And he turned and looked at me. Now, this is a dream now. And he never said anything except his expression said something to me. And what his, and, and it's just like I heard words that weren't said. And those words were basically like, kid, you don't know nothing. And boom, that was the end of the dream. There's a gentleman in Kentucky, a friend of mine, that I told about that. And I said, I'm sure that's not, I'm sure it doesn't mean, because Jimmy Swaggart was the biggest deal on television at the time. And a couple of days later, he got back with me and said, you know, I, I don't think you should dismiss that. I think you should just keep praying about that. And then uh, there's, there's other things I could talk about there. But you know what? A month later, Jim and Tammy Baker, boom, blew up blew up, blew up on CNN, on ABC, on NBC, on Nightline. It was big. And then a year later, the whole Jimmy Swagger thing blew up. And then after that, the whole Robert Tilton thing blew up. And see, here's the reason I'm saying this is that I, I, there's probably a lot of people that are caught up in what is going on with this IHOP thing that they, they weren't even around. Or if they were around, they were maybe like two. Like, I'm really, 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 really old. And I will tell this. My friend that I told that dream to, a couple of months later, he, call, he, he reminded me of this recently. But he called me a few months later and he said, you know what? Uh, you told me about that dream with Jimmy Swaggart. He said, well, I was in prayer and it was, I think it was a Saturday night, but he was in prayer. It was at 10 o'clock and all of a sudden like the spirit of prayer just really hit him. And it was like two o'clock before he was finished. He had like a four hour prayer session. And at the end of that time of praying in the spirit, he said, I knew that I was praying for Jimmy Swaggart. And, and he wasn't a big Jimmy Swaggart follower or fan or anything. He, he liked Jimmy Swaggart. Okay. But in the dream and folks, this is just the truth in the dream he had a dream. He was riding in a car with Jimmy Swaggart, and they were going through the bad part of town. And they drove up to a house of ill repute. And my friend said, Brother Swaggart, we, you can't do this. We can't, we, 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 we can't do this. And in my friend's dream, as he's telling it to me, Jimmy Swaggart said, we're not in church now. And boom, that was the end of the dream. And maybe you have to go back and do a little bit of history, but that fell big, that fell hard. It was crash and burn. Folks, it was awful. It was awful. But I'm saying all that to say this. We've been down this road before. And I've got so many of these 
that maybe I'll do part of them. And I want to get into this piece of video from this uh, general at the IHOP. But uh, just a couple of days, and I've been going through so much of this stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I wasn't even that caught up to speed on the the Jerry Falwell Jr. thing. Gah, gross, gross, nasty. Oh, but, so, but let me let me just say this: a while back, I announced because I've re- y'all I've reported all con- all kind of things on on the, the vaccine stuff, on pharmaceutical stuff, on election integrity stuff, on all kind of different things. But it's my intent to about once a week do something that's more news oriented and Sunday nights do a what's called the Sunday night in the scripture. Maybe I'm returning to my roots. But uh, this is what we're talking about tonight. And um, uh, as I was doing some preparation a day or two ago, I just boom, started typing out these these things that kept coming to me. And I'm going to go through a couple of them right now. Maybe it'll help you. The first thing that I wrote was alone is not permission. And what do I mean by that? When you have been through uh, some of the stuff that people can go through in a ministry or a church environment. Now, the the scandal there at IHOP is that this young lady was 19 years old. Mike Bickle was 42. And he uh, basically spiritually coerced her into very inappropriate stuff. I don't think it, it, she's not alleging, but it was very, 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 and, and I'll, I'll let you get that information. Okay. But, but the, the spiritual hurt and the spiritual abuse. Okay. And it doesn't always have to be sexual stuff. It can be just spiritual abuse. This is, I'll say this again, alone is not permission. And here's why I say that. If you've been through hurt and you've had to get away and you've had to really disassociate yourself and you feel all alone, but you're still a believer, please don't let that become permission to get away from what God has for you. God has something really good for you. And thank God that he got you out of that mess that you were in. Here's another one I just want to say. Supernatural manifestations are not proof of holiness. That is so hard to get wrap your head around. And I understand it because I've been there. Somebody might seem to, they might seem very prophetic. They might seem to, oh, this, when this person prays for healing, boom, it happens. And, oh, they have dreams. They have revelations. Oh my God. Okay. You know what? That stuff can happen. And sometimes it can be real. It's not proof of personal holiness. It's not. And sometimes people that have issues and stuff that they need to get right and they're not, or they haven't yet, or they need to repent, but they won't repent, or maybe they're going to repent, but they haven't repented, they can still have, God can still be using them. Samson and Delilah. Samson was playing around, playing around, playing around, and he still had all that strength, but there came a day where he lost it. I'll say this real quick, and then I'm going to get into this video. You never have to have what only a superhero can get you. That, that's just, when I, when I go through this IHOP stuff, I feel like I'm going through the Tilton thing all over again. I feel like I'm going through the Swaggart and the, and, the, and the TV preacher thing all over again. Because there can be this sense that this minister or this ministry, they've got the real revelation. They've got the real spiritual goods. They've, they've got it, you know. And you can, and we are, for so long, we have made superheroes out of ministers. And there can be this idea that they've got something and you have to get something. But if you're going to get it, you got to get it from them. You never have to have spiritually what you can only get from a superhero. If this vending machine doesn't work over here, you can walk across the aisle and that vending machine will work. But we fall into this thinking and we follow people and we build people up. It's a trap. Don't do it. Oh, and, I, and then I'll say this. Something bad is not going to happen to you if you walk away from a superhero. Woo! How many times 
Have I seen that? Or we've seen that. P uh, people are following a person. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow the Lord. And I've said this for decades. I cannot go to, or I mean, I may, may be able to go once. I cannot attend and be a part of a personality church. If it's a church based on a superstar personality, it don't work for me because I'm sorry. I've been around the block enough that I know that there ain't nobody that deserves that kind of uh, special nobody it, it, I could never go to a superhero church cannot do that cannot do that and if you find yourself in a situation where you're following a superhero do not fall for the lie that something bad is going to happen if you walk away from that superhero and they'll say things like okay so I, I do want to get to this piece of video because I um when we made the decision in this church, I just knew we had to go. I, I, it was time to go, uh, and I'm so thankful for that. And I remember walking into, and here's another thing. I was in full-time ministry, paid. That was the only thing that I did when I was like 20 years old. That should have never happened. That should have never happened. I was young. I was energetic. I was full of zeal. I'd been a rock and roller, so I had a lot of energy. I wasn't afraid to be up in front of people, but I had no pos the, <laughs> no reason whatsoever to be on a full-time church staff at age 21 years old with, with zero training. That, that should have never, ever happened. But when I walked into his office a few years later and said, we're leaving, boy, was that an interesting conversation. And I remember my first pastor saying to me, well, what, what, how, how, if, if you leave, how, how are you going to make, why, how are you going to make decisions without me there to counsel you? He literally said that. And I said, well, me and the Lord are going to be just fine. And it, it broke such, the power of that was just kind of like broken. But see, there was this, this sort of unstated thing that your life's going to fall apart if you don't follow me. And see, people people will give that kind of impression. Oh, I don't even want to think about what life will be like for you if you ever leave this church. And I'd heard him say things like, if anybody ever left this church, the judgment of God would be. And listen, I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Something bad is not going to happen to you if you walk away from a superhero. Anyone who asks, oh, I, I, these are all good, but I, I want to get into this video. I want to keep going. Anyone who asks or demands that you ignore your gut and trust theirs is dangerous. I saw an ad that a minister did, and I, I want to pray for this minister. I, I think it was just a slip OK, but they have a special program that you could enroll. And one of the and this was like a commercial they made. And it said, and when you join this program, your program, your prayers get VIP access. Oh, I just wanted to throw up. And this guy's doing a lot of good stuff. But really, if I start giving money every month in a certain way to a certain program, now my prayers are going to get VIP access that's dangerous, dangerous, dangerous ground. And but see, I, I I told this to some friends and I told it to my wife. See, my red flag just goes, ooh, I don't want, oh no, I don't like that. I, but see, what ministries can do, please follow me on this, and then we're gonna get into the video here. Is when you're in one of these spiritually abusive environments, there'll be something that 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 pops up. And part of you is going, man, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But you're caught up in the enthusiasm and people have str strong personalities and you're won over. But if you're not careful, what happens over time is you learn to ignore your gut. And that's very dangerous, very dangerous. 
That's why you see people that bought the C-19 narrative. And that's why people that you see people in all kinds of, because we, we have so many people today that have forgotten how to pay attention to their gut. And if you are part of or following or associated with a ministry that over time is causing you to ignore your gut, to ignore your gut, to ignore your gut, the day's going to come. You're going to look back and see all the stuff that your gut was telling you all along, but you'd been taught to ignore your gut. And I know that's how a lot of these people at IHOP got to be feeling. And so uh, let me get into this video here. Uh, I, hey, I've got some. Hey, Karen, how you doing? So I'm going to go. Here's what I'm going to do. I've got a lot of ground that I want to cover. But when I when I when I saw and I've gone through so much video, I want you to go through a, a five minute video with me. We're going to play a little bit, talk, play a little bit, talk, and then we're going to jump off of here. But this is the, the and I, I, I apologize. Maybe he'll say his name. His name is General something. So I hop several months in has brought in General So. <laughs> no, General So, I don't know his last name. I don't mean any disrespect. But I thought this is the most tone deaf. Uh, this is this is absolutely, absolutely crazy. But you start seeing the same dynamics. When, when PTL fell, Jerry Swalwell swooped in with business expertise and all this and tried to save it. He didn't save it. It flopped. And how many times has that been done? You try, there, there's like a, a, I guess it's okay. I, I'm, I'm really wanting to get to the video, but I, I, it's like the same movie played. So there's a, there's an allegation of something that's wrong. It's always money or girls, money or girls, money or sex. It, you know, it, it's, it's almost always that. But the first thing that'll happen is you try to suppress it. Leadership will suppress it. Just push it to the side, push it to the side. No, we don't want to deal with it. Keep it quiet. Oh, tell her, shut up. She's crazy. She needs to take her meds. He's nuts. He's a troublemaker. Get him out of here. Then if it gets beyond that, then what do you do? You minimize it, cool it down, minimize. Just like you heard Jim Baker saying, there was an incident uh, for 15 or 20 minutes. Dude, when you're, when you're, when you're when you're engaging in sex with a 20 year old and you're in your mid 40s and you're you're doing so because your wife is is has left you and you're trying to make her jealous it's not a 15 or 20 minute thing lust has to have time to conceive and the act that somebody's engaged in their thought life was there way long time before any, but see, before the act happened. But again, first thing is try to hush it up. Second, try to minimize it. Then if they can't minimize it enough, take control of the narrative. And then somewhere in there, third or fourth point is there's always this sort of kind of reliance on outside sources outside sources to bring legitimacy. When Bob Tilton was uh, being outed by uh, Diane Sawyer, he said, I have, I have experts, outside experts that set my salary. Well, the only problem was, I mean, he's, he's appealing to the authority of some unnamed outside source. Problem is that was a lie. And, it's, and they tell our board what my salary should be. Well, Bob, you were on your board, okay? There was only three people on your board, and one of them was you, and one of them was your wife. I know the person that set up your paperwork. I actually do. So, the, But there will be this appeal to, uh, you know, like some third party to give it legitimacy, and that's about where uh, I think the IHOP thing is. But listen, this I've already gone longer than I wanted to. I'm going to play this. Woo! I'm not good at move, moving this along. So this is general. I don't know. So this is the guy that they brought in to fix everything. So when I look at him, I feel like I'm looking at Jerry Falwell. And, and look, I've already blown what I thought my format would be. And I, But I just want to say this. You guys at IHOP, God bless you. Maybe what you need to do is hire a liquidation firm. I, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck. Sell off 
all your assets. If somebody wants to have a church out of what's left of the congregation, give them some money. Let them get a building and let them be a church. If somebody wants to pray 24-7, help them do that, but give the money away. Because I'm this, and this is me talking, not thus saith the Holy Ghost. But you know what? Does what is going on there necessarily have to continue? It, it, oh my gosh, I, I, I'm, I'm totally breaking every rule. I would hear Jim and Tara saving the ministry, saving. Well, what are you saving? Are you saving the amount of people that are actually getting saved? No. What they wanted to at when PTL. Uh, went through its demise. They had 1,200 employees. What were those employees doing? They were working in the mail room. It was a mail room business and hotels and this or that. Jimmy Swaggart had 500 employees. But what what is your quote ministry? Give all the sell all your stuff. Give the money away. The stuff that we do down here doesn't have to be permanent. All right, that's my opinion. It happens to be probably right. But anyway, here For we go. For the past several days, I've been under enormous pressure from the advocate group, their attorney, and external leaders to immediately concede to their demands for yet another independent investigation. Okay, so let me stop there. This is the general that is they brought in to be the the voice of reason and sanity and experience. Now, I will tell you this. This piece of video is like five minutes and 33 seconds long. I went through and I counted. The general says the words I, I've, I'm, me, or my 48 times. I challenge you. Go through it. At least 48 times. This is probably the most me, me, I, I, I've, me, my, my, that I've ever heard. What did he say? He's a general, but he's been under enormous pressure. We'll call the Wambulance general. I thought they brought you in to deal with this. But what is he under pressure for? He's been under pressure because the advocacy group. Now, who is the advocacy group? The advocacy group is a group that when these Jane Doe's, these women that had been abused, finally came to a place where they had to, they had to deal with this, they told some life long members of this IHOP organization, people that had been there from the very beginning for 20 years, And the advocacy group are the people that are actually standing up and trying to help them get their story out. And so what he's saying is, I've been under pressure from the advocacy group. I might back it up just a little bit because, hang on a second. concede to their demands for yet another independent investigation. Okay. The advocacy group, the people that are actually hanging out with the victims— The pressure that they're putting on the general is they want a third party investigation. Now, what he just said was yet another third party investigation. But I'm sorry. I'm just the old PTL Bob Tilton era guy looking at this. And and, and, uh, general, there ain't no independent third party investigation because at a minute 33, you say our independent investigator and that, uh, and then in about five minutes and thirty-three, you say our independent. So if if the independent investigator is your investigator, they ain't very independent. These are men that I barely know, but I've been told that failure to do so proves that I'm not serious about uncovering the truth and that I am unconscious of the implications that a failure to arrive at the truth will have on the entire Christian community. Yeah, you haven't known them very long because they've been involved in the situation from the beginning. You're just the hired gun that was brought in about three weeks ago. And guess what? They represent the victims. That's the most important party here. And I just got to say this, guys. I'm going to string a consciousness. What's so frustrating about this piece of video, 
I'm going to try to shut up and get through more of it. At no time in this five piece of, of five minute video do I ever hear him say, we want to bring healing to the victims. We are concerned about those that have been hurt. We are so sorry. I never hear him say sorry once. He talks about transparency and he talks about accountability, which to me sounds like C-Y-A. Keep going. Over the last several weeks, I have done everything in my power to negotiate with the I, advocate I, I, group to convince them to tell me what they know. I believe that this information would be very important for me to learn. Yeah, for him to learn. He's used all his coercive powers and all his negotiating skills to what? To get the people that are standing up for the victims to tell him what they know. Well, General, quit quit wearing your feelings on your sleeve, pal. Okay? It's it, this ain't about you, dude. All this stuff happened before you you're you're three weeks on the scene. The reason, and I'm just the outsider, and it's so obvious. The reason that they're not spilling all of the beans to you is, brother, they don't trust you. But it's not that they don't trust you, is they don't trust the situation. They don't trust the institution. They don't trust the way that this has been handled. And guess what? That is their right. This isn't about the general's feelings. They have claimed for months, both verbally and in writing, that they have credible evidence from eyewitnesses yeah i needed that information and i knew that they had already refused to provide it to our independent investigator sit not there the first time he said that did you hear that i and did have you noticed we're only like about a minute and in and how many times have you heard i i me 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 i i need they i me me i i i but he said i knew they hadn't supplied the information to our independent investigator. Do you see that with me? When you say our independent invest now, and some people know a lot more about this investigator than I do, but I just a peripheral reading. I believe the situation is they've hired a law firm, a law firm firm that has a history of protecting the people that hired them. Okay, so there's nothing independent about this general whatsoever. And you just hung yourself when you said our independent uh, investigation. So I hope that they would at least give it to me. <laughs> so I hope that they would give it to me. I'm sorry. I'm just the old gray-haired Tilton PTL swaggered era guy looking in on this, but that is a lot of I, I, me, me, I, 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 I. Again, General, it ain't about you. They don't want to give it to you because they're they're because the the concern is that you're going that it that the information is going to be managed, is going to be spun, is going to be handled, and we're uh almost. 25% into this, and you've never expressed any concern for the people that have been hurting whatsoever. They have refused repeatedly. Instead, they have decided to post videos that contain some of the information that I was diligently and honestly seeking. Instead of helping me, they have prevented me from finding out information that they're now willing to share with the whole world. Folks, this is that that lets so many cats out of the bag right there that they're willing to share with. The, and let me say this to all you young cats out there. I, I showed earlier in the program, I, you know, a few minutes. I showed you that charging document, 17 items. And see, that stuff all happened after I was gone. 17 items that this pastor was charged with. Only one did he not get convicted. He was convicted of rape. And I, I could show you the sexual predator picture from the state that he's in now. And I don't want to do that. I, I, I don't wish him any ill. I, I, he wants to move on with his life. But all those rapes, all those sexual batteries, about eight or nine or 10 of them, and aggravated theft, child endangerment. See, as I was reading that the other day, I started thinking, every one of those charges, 
there's a family involved. There's a person involved. There's a victim involved. But you know what we didn't have back then that thankfully the IHOP family has now? We couldn't get on social media and hear somebody talk about it. We couldn't go to somebody and message them and, and, and tell our story. But I, this is the weirdest, strangest thing to hear myself saying. If there's one good thing <laughs> about this pervasive social media area or era that we're in right now is this very thing. Victims can talk. Victims can talk to each other. Victims can get help. Victims get can get healing. And the people that want to control the narrative can't. And I, I said that kind of firmly, and I apologize. But that's the sense I get from this gentleman. He's mad that they didn't share it for him, go through his channel, because he's the authority. Why? Because they don't trust him, and they don't trust the situation, and they deserve to be able to get their message out. And that is one good thing about the era that we're in today. And they made these videos in December before I even assumed the responsibility of leadership here. He, he's actually whining. And, and I, I went through, it, what was it, the uh, advocacy group? There's like three videos on YouTube. It's not hard to find. That's funny, too. I'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But when you watch those, you're listening to people that they don't want to be dealing with this. They didn't ask for that. The, the, the guys that are speaking up for the victims, and there's a, a one with a couple of ladies on there, they didn't ask for this. There's nothing in it for them. It's not pleasant. They're doing something that they have to do that they'd rather not do that in a million years they wish the situation wasn't happening. And General Wine Master is whining because, and they made these videos before I ever, ever even came along. That's one of the craziest, stupid, I'm sorry, General. That's one of the stupidest things I've heard in a long time. I can't understand why they would not have provided these videos to me to support their claims. My, 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 me. It's because they, my, my, me, I, I, they don't trust the situation and you're part of the situation. They, they, these ladies went through what they went through. And it's not all about, I've already said that. It's, I'm the one person who has both the authority and responsibility to properly adjudicate this case. I, I don't have words. I am the one person that has the authority and the responsibility to properly adjudicate themselves. Brother, you're not thinking a little bit too highly of yourself, are you? You're the only person? Brother, I, I got news for you. Uh, and, and I wish you no ill, General, but brother, this is going to get adjudicated with or without you. It's going to be dealt with. Haven't you figured this out? I'm sure that when Jerry Falwell took over PTL in the back of his mind, he thought, okay, I've got this. We've got it all under control. We're going to, we're going to solidify and stabilize the situation, but it, it wasn't stabilized. What's going on? Brother, this is an avalanche <laughs> and you think you're controlling it. Uh, th those are just my feelings here. Okay, let's. Uh, uh, I feel like I'm raining on somebody else's parade here. This is. Uh, and hold people accountable. They haven't even given me a chance to do that. See, he wants to hold people accountable. We're almost halfway through this, and you've never heard him say once about i and and i've heard other see now I, I feel like i'm repeating something that i heard somebody else said but see i have a daughter and i have a wife has he expressed one ounce of concern about the pain and the hurt of the people that are the victims of this that are the reason this even exists no he's wanting to he uh, okay keep going i leave it to you to judge their motives for right. this in my role as a general officer in the U.S. military, oh, I've negotiated with our nation's enemies, with foreign officials at the highest levels of adversarial governments, and even with my own government up to the cabinet level. 
Folks, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm already gone longer. I, I think that is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard a guy say in a situ- in any given situation ever. You've got people that were victims of sexual abuse. And this guy's and and that's at the crux of all of this. And not only that kind of abuse, spiritually, prophetic, spiritual abuse. And again, I I know a little bit of something about this. I haven't been involved in, but but what he's talking about is how strong of a negotiator he is. Brother, if that was my daughter that was that 19-year-old girl, and I was listening to this grown man when my daughter's issue is finally come out that probably I didn't even know about for 20 years because she was so it was so painful and such a deep dark thing that they and I'm listening to this clown talk about his negotiating with enemies across the planet and enemies in our foreign government and even at the cabinet level I, I, I would probably I would probably drive to where he is and one of us would make the paper the next day keep going keep my going. rules for these negotiations have always been the same I work with truth negotiations now ne- what about reconciliations and facts rumors and unsubstantiated claims have no place in these dealings okay remember that he said this rumors and unsubstantiated claims just remember he said that it's going to be real important in just a minute that is the way i've always operated and still do the existence of these advocate group videos confirms to me that four members of the advocate group have looked me in the eye and lied to me. Now, he's saying because they made these videos, that means that four members of the advocate group, four people that are standing up for the victims, have lied to him. But less than 30 seconds earlier, he talks about rumors and unsubstantiated claims. So, General, bring the receipts, pal. You just accused four people who have nothing to gain from all this of lying, and you're bringing no receipts whatsoever, yet you're the one that's crying about rumors and unsubstantiated claims. Well, if you then bring the receipts, bring the re- bring bring the receipts, bring the proof, or shut up with your accusations. Shut up with your accusations. You, uh, uh, I, I didn't. Let's play this. I want to go home. This though. behavior completely undermines the trust and integrity that are fundamental to any honest discussion. I cannot, I, and will not work with or concede to the demands of people who do not tell the truth. Bring their seats. So would compromise my own principles, my and our organizational sovereignty. It w- I wanted you to hear the, our organizational sovereignty, See, folks. I've, the reason is, and again, I, I'm not an IHOP wannabe. I'm not the Rachel Dolans of IHOP. It's just that I've seen this movie before. I have seen this movie before, and it wasn't pretty then, and it's not pretty now. But when he's talking about the sovereignty of our organization, he's trying to save, and I'm just going to say it. Is he trying to save a ministry? How how can you save a ministry? If a ministry is ministering, it's ministering. No, he's trying to save a ministry apparatus. He's trying to save an institution. He's trying to save a machine, and again, you've heard absolutely zero concern for the victims. Would be completely irresponsible. This ministry has a mission to continue day and night prayer. We have a messaging platform to steward, and we have a local community to shepherd and equip. Uh, see, I'm, 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 hear, I'm hearing the same thing that I heard from Swaggart. I'm hearing the same thing I heard from Tilton. I heard the same thing I heard from VTL is we've got to keep this going. We've got to keep this going. We've got, no, maybe you need to shut it down. Maybe you need to liquidate 
And maybe you need to, the, 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 if there's any good cream that can rise to the top, bless them, send them off on their own. Maybe that's what needs to happen. But for, for that machinery to go on at all costs, I'm sorry, General. I've seen this movie before, and it doesn't have to go on at all costs. Today, I provided these videos to the independent <laughs> investigator. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to be done with this video. <laughs> oh I'm sorry. I, he might be the nicest guy in the world. Somebody that loves him, tell him, General, you are making a fool of yourself. He just said, uh, I have provided these videos to our independent <laughs> investigator. General, they're on YouTube. I watched all three of them today. Okay, anybody can watch them. What do you mean you gave them to? He, he, what he, what he do? He took out a saw. And he sawed off that first video and boom, and he put it on the table. And, ooh, 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 and then he put the second one on there. And then the third one, oh, that third one, oh, the shoulder. And then he took those three videos and he and he loaded them up in the truck. And then in, and then and he and then he drove them over to the investigator and he gave them to the investigator. I know I am being really, really silly with that, but he actually said, what do you mean you gave those videos to the investigator? She's a professional with the skills and experience necessary to determine the relevance of the advocate group's most recent publication. Okay, so she's a professional general who's paying her. Who does she work for? Who does she answer to? I'm just an outsider looking in and you can see it clear as day. That's what your advocate group has a problem with. She's not independent and you're going to prove it again here real quick. Her role is crucial in ensuring that the investigation is comprehensive and unbiased. I have never said that these allegations are not true. But you're acting like it. I have never questioned whether the alleged victims are telling the truth. But you call them rumors and innuendos. As I have constantly said from the very beginning of this, I want nothing more than to uncover the truth. That's still my goal. I'm going to stop right there. You know what, General? I think you should want a little more than to uncover the truth. I think you should want to not only uncover the truth, however the truth wants to come out, but I think more importantly than that, I think you should want healing. I think you should want remorse. I think you should want victims to be made whole and general in these five minutes, you never express that. I want to be done, y'all. I want to be done. I've been steadfast in my commitment to a process that is fair, just, and transparent. Okay, fair, just, and transparent. But what about healing? And what about restorative? I haven't heard anything like that. And by the way, folks, I already told you, 48 times, I, me, I've, or my. Significantly, and at all times, the allegations were treated as if they were credible in order to care for any past or present victim. If they were treated as though they were credible, why were you calling those guys liars? And why were you talking about unsubstantiated rumors? And and when and, and when you were doing that, you were uh, you were throwing a rumor out there because you weren't throwing any receipts. Folks, we're almost done. I'm trying to be done. Well, I want to be done. due diligence was being performed. I remain open to any credible evidence that can illuminate this situation. As long as and it goes I'm through you. I'm dedicated to following through with this process Listen. until its rightful conclusion. I now know what I must do. <laughs> and what is, if you're really speaking from your heart, why do you have to edit your video? Did you notice that? The quick little, whatever, maybe that's a, now he knows what he must do. I know what I must do in my role as I am my rolling. I no longer need the unsolicited <laughs> outside advice of people who have no authority here. 
Brother, I got general. I just got to tell you, if you think that you've got any authority, and I'm not trying to be a jerk, general, you ain't got no authority. You're you're a figurehead. That this we've seen this movie before. You're not righting the wrongs. You're not steering the ship. I'm sorry, folks. I don't have a dog in this fight. See, it doesn't, I don't have any emotional t- attached, attachment to IHOP. I care about people. And I, uh, when I hear this dude talk, it just grates on me. I will wait the independent results of our investigator. Okay. I can almost be, did you hear it? I'm going to back it up. I, this is the second time he has said that. I, what he's going to say is, I will await okay who's gonna wait i will because i'm the only person that has the responsibility to art to adjudicate or whatever he said but i am gonna wait the results the independent results of our investigator listen to this i'll await the independent results of our investigator and did you hear it (laughs) brother that ain't independent and all your negotiating that you've done with, you know, probably she and Putin and all these people all over the planet, you can't you can't quite figure that out. That ain't independent, Doc. And compare those with what the new leadership here and I have found on our own. And then use those findings to hold people accountable for their behavior and to correct all organizational shortcomings as necessary. Oh, my gosh. OK, I get to be done here. I really do. So. He's going to wait until the facts come in, the independent results for our investigator. And then what's he going to do? He's going to compare it to the results that he's come up with, with the brand new board. All right. And then what are they going to do? They're going to do everything they can to bring healing and reconciliation. No, they're going to, they're going (laughs) to, we're going to write a policy manual. Do you hear any reconciliation? Do you hear any concern for the victim whatsoever? I'm just the gray-haired old uh, Tilton, PTL, Baker, uh, Swaggered era dude looking in here. Folks, we have seen this movie before. I'm sorry, this is pathetic. We will not tolerate misconduct of any kind. Okay. And we stand against any form of abuse. Thank you. Well, that was that was really, really powerful. I'm going to read one more of these. I'm going to sign off. I'm just this is the first one. If you are afraid to leave a leader. You need to leave that leader. If you feel you owe it to a spiritual leader. To the point you must obey, cover up, look the other way for you don't do not base your life on what god told someone else about you if god did not tell you the same thing and preferably first i'll just say this when we be done you're not obligated to defend someone's perceived reputation or status uh here's one last one i got a bunch of these when leaders think they are invincible. They're not. Y'all, please like, please share, please subscribe. <laughs> this isn't even my wheelhouse, but I wanted to talk on this tonight. And it, well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about. It. I, I, I'm I'm gonna put a word. Oh, I'm, gosh, here I'm doing it. The reason for talking about this is, folks, we are gonna see. I believe a lot more of this. The big star preacher days are over. The big unapproachable platform days are over. And we don't want people sidelined. We don't want people hurt. We don't people want people wounded. We want them in the fight. And so we're going to, and I'll tell you what, transparency is here and it's here to stay. And managing the narrative, that's old school. It's over. It's not going to be tolerated. Uh, I need to be done. I need to be done. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless the state of Ohio, which overrode Mike DeWine's veto. We're so thankful about that. We'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. I hear the sweet sound.